In today's episode, you'll learn the history of the rise of these mighty Netherlands. It will be a story of bloody struggles in the fight for freedom, knightly glory, and adventures on unknown lands to finally create a country of prosperity and happiness. Welcome guys, here's Lucas. Holland is a very small duchy located on the edge of the Holy Roman Empire, although the duchy itself is considered part of it. The true ruler of Holland in year 1444 is Duke Philip III of Burgundy. His influence actually extends to practically all the duchies in the Netherlands region, especially the richer ones, such as Flanders and Brabant. Holland itself has very rich and highly developed provinces. As a result, it is a wealthy country, capable of maintaining a sizable military force. The social estates enjoy certain privileges. And yes, the clerical estate supports state administration. In addition, we have religious diplomats, which allows our diplomats to act more effectively on the international stage, well, at least in the Catholic sphere, clerical education speeds up the process of reforming our country to become a more modern state, in return for supremacy over the crown. The nobility supports Holland militarily, and in exchange for a series of trade privileges, the merchant class supported us with cheaper loans and diplomatic actions. During the National Assembly, it was decided to fulfill a mission for the nobility. As a result, one of its members will work for less money. Yes, to accomplish this, I did a trick again. Of course, regarding the recruitment of the army and its withdrawal, to then repay all our debts. At the Dutch court, artist Adrian Nimegana was hired, as well as the very talented diplomat Rembrandt Hilversum. In some time, our military minister should also appear, Adrian Costers, who, fortunately, will work for us almost for free. But watch out, at the end of 1444, on a cold November night, a conspiracy was hatched in Holland to break away from Burgundian rule and perhaps establish their own free country in the future. For this purpose, the conspirators sent their representatives to King Charles VII, the ruler of France, to gain his support for their independence ambitions, as well as to the ruler of Aragon, King Alfonso V. These countries viewed Burgundy as an enemy. Unfortunately, the Austrian emperor did not want to support Holland's aspirations for independence, because he was friendly towards Burgundy. With the last of their money, they recruited a free mercenary company, which was to to support Holland's push for independence. They also enacted a privilege granting certain rights to officers originating from the noble estate. The commander of the Dutch forces became General Gaspar Hendrik on December 12, 1444. The Dutch War of Independence broke out. France and the Kingdom of Aragon came to the aid of Holland. The interim leader of Holland was chosen to be Count Jan II von Glimas. Remember, this leader is completely random. He is selected at the moment of declaring a war of independence. Here, of course, I managed to get it right on the first try. And more importantly, on the first monthly tick, a trait for your leader will be chosen. So, if you're aiming for a specific one, keep that in mind. Luckily, our Prince Jan the Tint turned out to be a rather cautious ruler. This will surely aid him in future conquests. For now, the Dutch army has retreated to Amsterdam and is protected by the fortress in Den Haag, which has been further fortified and prepared for a lengthy siege. It's clear that the fight for Dutch freedom will be quite costly. Thus, cheaper loans were taken from the merchant estate. Diplomats were also dispatched to improve relations with the Austrian emperor and the French ruler. It can be observed that the French army initially focused on battles in the Brittany region. In contrast, the Aragonese army, for unknown reasons, withdrew from West Burgundy and launched an assault on Brittany. The Dutch fleet operated off the coast of the Netherlands and delivered supplies to our fortress in Den Haag. However, it also avoided clashes with the Burgundian fleet because it is much stronger than ours. A little tip for your campaigns. The ideal scenario is one where both Austria and France support your independence. This will facilitate your further conquests with in the Holy Roman Empire. Without an alliance with the Emperor, he will demand the return of conquered land in the Empire every time. Unfortunately, for the course of our war, the French decided to engage with smaller forces. As a result, they lose their confrontations with Burgundy. But to achieve this victory, Burgundy had to withdraw its besieging army from Den Haag. Dutch troops then moved to Antwerp to take the fortress. However, they avoided a confrontation with the troops of the Duchy of Burgundy. So as soon as our spies detect this Burgundian army approaching, I retreat. 
In the meantime, stability has been restored to our country because breaking away from the Duchy of Burgundy caused certain social upheavals. However, when the Burgundian troops arrived at our capital, it's hard not to attack them, especially since they are led by Philip III, who is an excellent commander. In the battles, the odds are pretty even. Nevertheless, the confrontation ends in a defeat for the Dutch forces. Despite the ongoing war in our country, the European Knight Tournament was organized. Onward to glory. At the end of the year 1446, the Netherlands managed to make peace with Brittany. Of course, it involved payments and war reparations. After almost a year-long siege, the fortress in Rissel fell, captured by the valiant Dutch army. Subsequently, the Dutch army, along with auxiliary French forces, marched to battle Burgundy for our own capital, achieving a dramatic victory over the Burgundians. In the meantime, a new heir to the throne was born, Willem. A successful future wouldn't be foretold for him. After over four years of intense warfare, in May 1448, the Netherlands finally gained independence, expanding into the territory of Flanders. France gained land in western Burgundy as a result of their assistance. The peace treaty excluded the unclaimed territory of Brabantse, even though Antwerp boasts a thriving trade port. We fear the reaction of the Austrian emperor, who might demand the return of these territories to Brabantse. This war was certainly one of the bloodiest. However, the outcome granted us the third richest port in the English Channel trade region. Of course, the richest is our capital, Amsterdam, only overshadowed by the Anglo-Saxon London. Our small duchy is threatened by Friesland, Galloway, and Utrecht. Therefore, we will view them as rivals on the international stage. Marriages were also arranged with the House of Valois from France, as well as with the Kingdom of Aragon. To reduce military expenses, all cavalry units were removed from the army, as they were quite expensive to maintain. To compensate for the cavalry's removal, additional infantry regiments were called upon to secure our fledgling duchy. Our prince decided to attack Friesland. However, our main goal is solely to weaken this country, because our young duchy has garnered considerable interest from neighboring nations. With a bold move, the Friesland army was decisively defeated. In a short time, Friesland fell. Unfortunately, this still did not end our war. Upon establishing our administration in the newly conquered territories, the Netherlands reaffirmed its sovereignty. Brunswick only made peace with us after the fall of their capital. Our war to humiliate Friesland ended with an impressive show of strength. Thus, emboldened by this victory, the Netherlands attacked the bishopric of Utrecht, also for humiliation. The war, unfortunately, lasted quite a while, but culminated in our victory. Utrecht was humiliated, autonomy was reduced in the newly conquered territories. The Council of Estates decided that we should focus on improving relations with the papacy. They might become our allies. This should positively impact how we are perceived by the rest of the nations in the Holy Roman Empire. Diplomats were also sent to England to enhance relations between our countries. To expedite the spread of certain modern ideas throughout our country, Dutch ships were once again allowed to sail the English Channel. Thus, our merchants will have higher revenues here. In just 10 years, the total income of our small Netherlands practically doubled. Our Prince John has developed the infrastructure in the capital. He wants to expand it as quickly as possible, aiming to make it the most significant trading port in the area. In Brabant, a rebellion has emerged. Will it be able to free this country from Burgundian rule? We'll see. The odds are indeed high. Unfortunately, in March of 55, a tragic accident occurred and our young heir died. And so, the Duchy of Brabant freed itself from Burgundian rule. In Burgundy itself, due to the unfortunate wars it waged and the very poor governance of its current ruler, a peasant's war broke out. A new, magnificent heir was born. It doesn't matter that he's illegitimate. New obligations were contracted from merchants to modernize our state. For this reason, new ideas started to develop within. Our ruler knew that the Netherlands is a small, wealthy country, with a large amount of land still available for development. So, he focused on modern infrastructure that will positively impact this growth. England also took advantage of Burgundy's weakness and attacked its territory. I won't lie, it might lead to interesting resolutions. In the meantime, our diplomacy focuses on making claims to Burgundian lands, as well as convincing France to support our future diplomatic moves. And so, an opportunity presented itself. England took over Burgundian territories in Picardy. With the help of France, our prince will attack England to capture Calais, as well as a few remaining provinces from the Picardy region. In the meantime, 
our Prince John Descent is implementing a reform, a reform of our country's ministers to utilize their experience. After all, they previously managed the Holy Roman Empire. English troops landed in southern France, defeating their smaller armies. Although unfortunately, it seems the French army regrouped and defeated the smaller English forces. But ultimately, they lost. Thanks to the government's good policies, the reform of state institutions was expedited and a series of privileges were granted to the ministers. This is why they agreed to work for lesser pay. Under the chaos of the battle, a great battle with English troops erupted. Of course, the first strike, leading the charge were Dutch troops, who were supported by French forces. Thanks to this, we achieved a gigantic victory. French troops also crossed the Pyrenees, heading towards Portugal. Oh no, what news from the empire? Some Italian duchies decided to separate from it. Will this happen? Alright, we all know they will, because the emperor will decide to abandon Italy. Let's take advantage of the emperor's affection for us and forge a royal marriage with him, which will eventually lead to the creation of an Austro-Dutch alliance. Our troops attacked Lisbon, but unfortunately they must retreat because noble rebellions have erupted in our country. They chose a good moment. Fortunately, a battle took place near our capital where we crushed these rebels. Troops, led by Hrisman Smutsas, wanted to give England a thrashing. Oh, in the meantime, the Italian Dochis left the HRE. It's a success, the English troops were defeated, defeated again, and finally crushed. However, our army suffered significant human losses. Therefore, it had to retreat to its own territory to replenish its ranks. To clarify, yes, we would replenish our losses everywhere. But on your own territory, it happens without any penalties and is the fastest. Given that the war with England is going quite well, our ruler decided to attack Flanders and to complete the conquest of this former duchy, especially since no one will come to its aid. Urbanization of Den Haag, peasants, craftsmen, artists and other commoners. They are moving to the city of Den Haag. The province is undergoing active urbanization and indeed we want to boost our production. It will benefit us because we have cloth here and it will increase the trading power of this province. It seems there's another civil war happening in England since London is under the occupation of some rebels. As a result, there was a change in the dynasty on the throne. In December 64, the following peace with England England was agreed upon. In essence, all provinces from the Picardy region were transferred to Holland, including Maine, and two southern English provinces were handed over to France. The peace treaty is settled in December, because as it's known from the new year, all countries will love us a bit more, and they will forget what happened in previous years. And as the saying goes, where there are five countries, a coalition is born. As a result, our territories expanded with ports in Calais. This is a very important trade province. But the English didn't expand those ports? Why? Flemish culture became an accepted culture in our country. An alliance was also formed with the Austrian Emperor. This was super important for us. Because when you have an alliance with the current reigning Emperor, in my case it's Austria, at the moment when you conquer land within the Holy Roman Empire, the Emperor won't demand land from you. Now, a few years of peace ahead for Holland. Market places and ports will be expanded in our cities. Time goes by and we're finding justification for our wars. A rebellion in Calais and then after the rebellion. France, our faithful ally calls us to war and it's our duty to respond to it. Unfortunately, our alliance with the Kingdom of Aragon has come to an end because the Iberian wedding happened. As a result, Castile and Aragon have a common ruler, Enrique IV de Trastamare. As a result of this war, we gained a lot of favors from France. Therefore, we could use our diplomacy to increase this country's trust in us. It's possible that soon they will stop demanding our territories. Our magnificent ruler decided to distribute some titles to the lands, especially those conquered and developed. Of course, not for free, and then demand their return. As a result of the development of our ports, our marketplaces, in general, our merchants gained the strongest influence in the English Channel. This allows us to reap the largest profits in this region. Then, our ruler sponsored a series of investments in cloth production. With the development of the Dutch fleet, it was time to develop its naval doctrine. 
And since we are a maritime country with a powerful fleet, we will use our fleet not for waging wars, but for trade, for establishing contacts with other countries outside of Europe and bringing their goods to Europe, which we will profit from. The efforts of our government will temporarily focus on centralizing our bureaucracy. Our provinces will be further developed through infrastructure, so they will require more management skills. Infrastructure development in provinces is really very profitable. Unfortunately, although our country was rich and tolerant, it still experienced several revolts. Could it be that our two most trusted advisors were conspiring against us? Perhaps it's better to get rid of them, but of course in the right way so we can rehire them later. After all, they are too cheap, they are also very good. Our ruler knew that Holland faced the following choice for its future, as it was surrounded by the smaller duchies of the Holy Roman Empire, which of course it could conquer. It could take the path of expanding its spy network, which would facilitate these conquests. However, he heard rumors of a new land far beyond the edge of the known map, discovered by Portuguese and Castilian sailors. Perhaps it was time for Holland to reach new lands. If not those mythical distant lands, then perhaps she reached the distant shores of Africa after all. However, our ruler had a strong intuition, almost a certainty that an effective spy network would always come in handy, and thanks to our national propaganda, perhaps we will be better perceived abroad when the spies were already active. He declared war on Brandenburg. He called upon the Austrian emperor for assistance, although ultimately France was also called upon, because it was noticed that they were heading towards Burgundy. Of course, the Burgundian duchy had no chance against us. With the money obtained from the war, a powerful flagship was built, which should reflect the fighting spirit of the Dutch navy. It will carry a simple and easy to pronounce name. Our power has grown so much that we can consider England our rival on the international stage. As a result, we imposed an embargo on English products. Great news for us, we have been chosen to host the Reichstag this year. After expanding our ports, various trade facilitations and solutions were implemented, but not for the whole country, only in specific provinces to increase the power of our merchants. Our country is also so rich now that it can afford to build new magnificent churches. Taking advantage of the peaceful period in our country, diplomats are organizing spy networks in the Brabant region to have territorial claims here. Holland is such a wealthy country that it can afford to hire the best advisors. Of course, they are already working for half the pay. Our skilled spies manage to steal a map of the western seas of Africa, and thus the aspirations to develop the infrastructure of our small, wealthy country reached their peak. This now allows us to develop our provinces at a very low cost. Another time, we stole a map of the Congo from the Portuguese. Our workshop also began modernizing our army. Initially, it began by expanding the artillery. Byzantine refugees, and they weren't just any refugees. They were researchers, they were thinkers, they were artists. We warmly welcomed them to our country. We also discovered the coast of Guinea, thanks to the help of the Portuguese. In 1488, our ruler decided that it was finally time to conquer Antwerp, which is a very important trading port in the area. The last one that does not belong to us, at least on the continental part. We called upon France for assistance, with whom we already have very good relations. And soon, they will be so excellent that France will never have territorial claims to our lands. The capital of Brabant fell very quickly. In gratitude for the effectiveness of our soldiers, we allowed them to plunder Antwerp. In this war, there are many minor duchies in the area, but they probably won't pose a major problem for us, thanks to our diplomacy and the construction of an effective spy network in Brabant. Its conquest is of interest to practically no one. Well, practically no one important. And we quickly establish our Dutch administration there. Throughout the country, the construction of courts also began, which will improve the efficiency of our administration. A talented architect has visited our country. Will we be able to change our country? country through him, further expanding it. After filling the Netherlands with churches, our ruler levies additional taxes. I don't know if you know, but when you build churches in your provinces, from the burn of development, you get more money. And I burn it as I'm getting close to gathering capacity. Oh no, after the death of our excellent ruler, many seek the crown. Will Willem VII win, or Casper, who is heir to the throne? It looks like Willem 
one will win. I have some strange feelings. The trend of colonialism was born with the discovery of the new world and the beginning of the colony development process in that region. Therefore, our ruler intensified efforts to develop our capital. With such a magnificent capital, we became one of the world's powers. Thanks to our spy network, we managed to mitigate the negative perceptions of our conquests worldwide, taking advantage of the Franco-English war and the fact that France won't respond to Liege's call for war, we attacked that country and their allies. Our opponents were not too sharp. They divided into smaller armies, which we would defeat one by one. From the ongoing battle, I must admit, our Dutch fleet just sunk the English one. The Burgundian crisis. Not much of Burgundy is left. The Burgundian-Austrian Union was formed, or rather, the Austrian Burgundian. France seems to have decided not to fight for those few provinces. The Protestant Reformation erupted. Given that the Netherlands never got along with the Pope, it's evident from our relations. The ruler of the Netherlands decided to convert to Protestantism, thus supporting the new movement. The propagation of the new faith began in the most developed provinces. It's time to support our massive trade in the Baltic, which might allow us to acquire some riches in Africa. However, we'll wait on that. The Protestant faith is spreading rapidly in the Netherlands. Thanks to both the fervor of the religious center and the efforts of our missionaries, thus the last ports were developed and the last provinces expanded. This allowed us to enjoy a significant share in the English Channel, achieving astronomical profits. In 1515, under the leadership of our magnificent prince Willem VII, the Dutch lands were united, enabling the creation of the Greater Netherlands, which looked quite impressive. In Europe, the Netherlands had already achieved all almost everything they could, without clashing with the most powerful countries in the region. Therefore, the future direction of the country is to conquer lands, to which, for now, no one lays claim. After all, who will ask the local population for their opinion? The Netherlands simply opted for overseas expansion. I recommend watching this episode. In it, I will not only show you how to liberate Afghanistan from Timurid's rule, but I will also show you how to create the Mughal Empire, which will allow you to get a certain rare achievement. 